Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Alina. Hope you're well, guys. Hello, Nikita. Uh, good afternoon, Astanbek. Astanbek, sorry. I'm all right. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, night again. Um, how are you? How was your off? Obusara, <laughs> good afternoon. Thank you guys for sending me home task. Uh, once again, do not send me home task after midnight because unfortunately I do not check my mail mailbox after midnight. So there is no use to do it at night. And um, in the morning, I do not have time because I'm um, getting ready for the lesson. So also one day prior to check your home task, it's not possible for me. Well, try to do it the same day when we had a lesson. Um, so at least I, I, I would have a time to check it. Um, I would like to apologize for the last, for the previous lesson because we've been interrupted and we couldn't um, practice past tense. And this lesson I decided to uh, practice a lot, to do a lot of exercises and talk in details about past tenses, about past simple, past continuous and past perfect. All right, so let's start. Well, do you see my presentation? Is it clear? Yes, I think again. Right. So I can talk about the past. This, this, uh, it will be the topic of the day. And today we will listen to the previous topic. If you remember, we've been listening to uh, different people talking about their family backgrounds. So we will listen it again and do exercise in regards of that. But before we start, I would like to talk to you in details about past tenses. Yeah. Do you remember we start talking about past simple? Can you remind me what is past simple? So we talk about past simple. Um, when we want to talk about actions that took place in the past um, at a specific moment in the past, right? So we use specific timing to show this action in the past. So for example, World War II finished in September 1945. Um, yes, action in the past at the same moment. Right, when we talk about facts in the past, habits in the past, or something that's really um, important, but it was in the past as well. Uh, to express how the things were in the past. So we also use past simple. What auxiliary, auxiliary web do we use in past simple when we want to um, ask something? Can you remind me the structure of past simple? So uh, we use was, where, plus ing, right? But it's not past simple structure, it's past continuous. Did, yes, absolutely did. We use auxiliary verb did and ed for um, regular words. But what about irregular? What happens to the regular verbs? What do we use in the in sentences? It's participle one or participle two. Verb set form. All right. Second form, exactly. It's infinitive, participle one and participle two. In a past simple, we use second form, means participle one, right? Mm -hmm. Past continuous, that's the one you've been talking about 
uh, the structure you, you mentioned, uh, Suban, when we want to show the action in the progress for the short period of time, right? I was listening um, to music, to radio. Uh, past simple and past continuous usually are used in, the, in one sentence. Uh, when we want to show that one action that was in the process was interrupted by another one. Yeah, do you remember this? For example, I was eating dinner when he called me last night. So I was having my dinner and one of a sudden somebody called me. So my action was interrupted by another. Yeah, so this is a sentence in the past. We want to talk about the process, the progress of the, of the action and the, the fact that happened in the past. Usually we use um, the words like um, last year, uh, yesterday, two days ago, when we uh, talk in past simple tense. So once again, the combination of past simple and past continuous is widely used in one sentence when we want to show that one action was interrupted by another one. So here we are. Um, also, there, you have to remember that um, we use past continuous after words like when and while. For example, I broke my arm while I was skiing in Alps. So while shows that, that after while there is an action that needs to be shown in the progress. Is it clear? All right, so uh, let's be back to the topic that we had last time. I would like to uh, memorize with you to re-listen once again the topic about uh, different family backgrounds. So you can refresh your memory and after that we will finish the exercise that we're supposed to do last time. Are you ready to listen? Right. So 1A. Exercises 5 and 6. 1. My name's Bilal, and I live in Bradford, in the north of England. Both sets of my grandparents emigrated from Pakistan in the 1960s, just before my parents were born. My dad worked on the buses, and my mum stayed at home and brought up the family. Dad would like a change of career but it's a bit late for him now to change jobs. I think he's just looking forward to retiring. I've got a sister who's 25. She didn't leave home until last summer when she got married. My dad wants me to go to university in Birmingham and study law. But I think I'd like to start my own business, creating computer games. Two. Sandra. Tell me a bit about your background, Sandra. Well, I grew up in the village where my family has lived for generations. My great-great-granddad moved here from Birmingham in the 1930s, looking for work. What kind of work did he find? He found a job on a farm just outside the village. He settled down, married a local girl and started a family. They worked incredibly hard and over the years they managed to save quite a bit of money and eventually bought a small farmhouse with some land. And does your family still own that land? Yes, it does. My great-great-grandparents had a son. When he got married, he bought more land and now the farm is quite big. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so one day I'll inherit it and keep it running. Three. My mum met my dad while she was on holiday in France. She's British and he's French. They fell in love, got engaged after a week and were married a month later. And then I was born. They named me Charlotte, as it's both an English and a French name. Anyway, unfortunately, the marriage didn't last. They split up when I was just a toddler and got divorced a few months later. I was brought up by my mom after she moved back to the UK. It was tough for her being a single parent, but she went to university, got a degree and then became a teacher. 
She met my stepdad at university, and they've been married for about 10 years. 4. My name's Callum. My mum's parents were from poor working class families in Glasgow. They left school at 16 and didn't go to university. But they started a successful business and didn't retire until they were in their 70s. My mum inherited quite a bit of money when they passed away, but she didn't want to work in the family business and sold it. She moved south and settled down in Liverpool. She got married and took an office job, but she soon wanted a change of career. I think she was fed up with the cold, wet weather too, because she persuaded my dad to emigrate to Australia when I was two. I'd love to visit Glasgow and Liverpool one day and see where my mum and her parents lived before emigrating. Right? Well, um, before we move further, doing exercise number six on page nine from your student's book, I would like to ask you, all these families mentioned the word inherit. What does it mean? The first who would answer? Don't get the mark. Inherit. Do you remember we've been talking about this word um, during our lesson previous time? What does it mean, inherit? Yes, exactly, Nikita. Good. So it's something that you get after your um, parents or grandparents. Can be farm, money, exactly, Bubusara, yes. So something you will get after. House, money, farm, any kind of um, expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, this is an exercise number six, page nine. Uh, we have to complete the sentence that using past simple and words are given to you. It's uh, page number nine, exercise number six. The words are here. So, my parents from Pakistan in the 60s. Past simple, we have to use. Very good example, Nikita. Very good. Yes, good, perfect. Uh, my parents lived, okay, lived when you go away, uh, but live from. Don't you think it's better to say immigrated? Yes, we can say my grandparents immigrated from Pakistan in the 1960s. She Right, no worries, it's okay. She home until last summer when she married. Right, you can put slash and the second word straight away. Okay, don't forget that we have to use past simple. She didn't leave home until last summer, so she still lived there, okay, before she got married. Now it's good. I in the village where my family has lived for generations. What did she do? Lived, you can say, I live in the village, but she become older, year by year, grew up. Very good. I think, okay. They managed to save quite a bit of money. Nikita, perfect and eventually a small farmhouse with some land bought other options bought okay very good guys they in love okay fell okay what about past simple okay in love then they engaged after okay got engaged Bubusara. good vladimir got engaged after a few weeks and were married in a month later um i brought up by my mom after she i was mm -hmm. and the second word after she
moved. We didn't use the word move here, right? After she moved back to. They school lived, Nikita, all right? It's 16 and... Started, didn't go, okay. Right, they didn't go to school at 16. Hmm. They left. Leave, it's a present tense. In the past tense, it's a regular verb and had the form of left, right? School at 16 and... What do we do? Right, Nikita? We went to the university or we... Yeah, didn't go. It's about the parents of our hero column. They successful business and until they were in their 70s. They started. Good, Bubusara. Very good. All right. And the last word is didn't retire. Very good, Bubusara. Perfect. Um, Miss Miss Saginova, very good job. I'm very proud of you. Very good to work. Right. And today we will talk about past perfect tense uh, some of you are quite familiar with this tense but uh, for the rest of you guys it will be something new uh, past perfect actually it's a very nice tense i love it because british they says uh, they say if you speak sentence in perfect tense means you know english <laughs> so past perfect what does it show when do we use past perfect? When do we use it? We also use it in a, a combined sentences with past simple, but past of past. Yeah, yes, Uban, very good explanation. Is used to talk about an action which happened before another action in the past. Oh, it's not finished yet. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. So, in the past, it's not mentioned here. He started a business before he left school. He had started his business. So, something happened before um, simple past tense in the past. I will talk about what was before main action in the past all right Bubusara, very good he had started it's had and uh, um, ed for regular verbs and if the words are irregular what happens if the words are irregular it's participle one or participle two Participle to Nikita, perfect. So you see here in the in the theme now the action is taking place now. Simple past sim simple past simple. Uh, he left the school. An action that took place before it. He had started his business. Do you know this gentleman who had started the business before he left school? Who is he? What is he? All right, yes, he is founder of Facebook, right? He had started his business before he left the school. He's the richest teenager. He was the richest teenager 20 years ago. Also, past perfect is used to talk about the action which happened before a state, stated time in the past. Stated time in the past. Look at the example. Had you ever visited London when you moved? Uh, there. So if you look here, have you ever visited London before you moved to London? So for this uh, terms, we use such kind of phrase like when, by, um, until, before. So we have to show that action took place before the main action in the past simple. Is it clear? So, exercise number five. 
that is page 10. Um, at home, I would like you to read short article. It's exercise number two. Very interesting article for you, I believe. And exercise number five, complete the sentences with correct past simple, past continuous, or past perfect. Let's practice now. We move a house a lot while I grow up. Had moved, we moved, it's just a fact in the past. Yes, it's past simple, fact in the past. Look, we have while here. I think you're very good. Mm -hmm. We have while here, so means I in grow up will be used in what terms? I was growing up. Very good. Very good, Bubu Sara. So one is a fact. We moved a lot while I was growing up. Vladimir, good. After Joe learned to drive, he buy a car. Hurt his head. All right. One action before another action. And all these actions are in the past. Yes. Before. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Had learned to drive, he by bought. Bobo Sarah, good. George leaves school, go to university and study engineering. I dig in. All right, look, it's just one fact after another fact, and all these facts have no influence to another one so it's just one fact we can put full stop another sentence full stop so for it's a uh, three facts it's just counting of facts left the school past simple went to university past simple and started engineering past simple exactly so far all these sentences can be used one by one, or we can just put come. Where you live when you get your first job. Look, there is when. Means the action was in the process. Bubusara, to think twice. Uh -huh. Action. Exactly, Suban. Where were you living? Exactly. You, it's a um, second phase, sim, single um, plural, so it's where. Where were you living when you, past simple? So the process was interrupted by another. Exactly. My parents in 1990. In specific time got mm -hmm, but simple they had fallen in love two years before while they while mm -hmm, Nikita good while means they work work will be used in exactly Nikita perfect very good Kim won a change of career, so she immigrated to Australia. Two facts. One has no a connection with another, I mean, no influence to another. One fact and another fact. Wanted, okay. And the second word is immigrated. Very good. So uh, once again, when we talk about facts, even if these facts are in one sentence, like example number four, oh no, no, example number three. You see, we have three different facts and one comes after another. So we use these verbs in past simple. When we want to talk about action that was interrupted by another action, we can use past continuous and past simple. When we want to show that 
action took place before another action, but both of them were in the past. We use past perfect and past simple. Is it okay? Is it clear? Yes. One more exercise, number six. So you will have less homework this time. Um, do you do you recognize this gentleman? Do you know what's his name? Where is he from? No. Well, this short article about him. His name is Mr. Kimura. He is from Japan and he's the oldest man in the world. He was the oldest man. So what we have to